Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ladies, welcome, welcome to John's Gospel, the truth. It is a blessing to have each and every one of you. I'm sure that you all feel the same way I do. It's like the first day of school, but even better and greater. Hallelujah. Only Jesus could do us like that, right? So I am just so grateful that you have joined us for uh, this study. It was such a blessing uh, for many of you all who joined us for People of the Promise Kingdom Divided. Again, you ought to give yourself a pat on the back for surviving that one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So thank the Lord for John's gospel, <laughs> the truth. Amen. Angie's full of laughter because she's like, if we survive that one, we've got this one. But God's actually got it, right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So welcome, ladies. Welcome. I uh, am Sherelle Warren. I'm your teaching leader for uh, the Garland Women's Day class. And uh, this is my third year in this role. And to God be the glory for his equipping and the confidence that he gives. I could do nothing on my own. I am weak, but he gives me strength. Hallelujah. And so I'd like for us to, uh, as others are coming in, and, and we're grateful to God that they're joining us here in the sanctuary because BSF does promote their fourfold approach, which Angie will tell us a little bit more about, but I'm going to uh, open us up in prayer. And so if uh, you would bow your heads with me, I certainly would appreciate it. Heavenly Father, we come before you, uh, which cometh our help. Lord, we give you praise and honor because you're worthy. You are the only true and living God. It is in with you that we find saving faith, Lord. We thank you that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, Lord, and that he was resurrected, Lord, on the third day. And so, Lord, I ask if there's anyone in here who doesn't know Jesus Christ and the pardon of their sins, that their hearts would be transformed today and they would come to know you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for all the disciples that are among us today. May we be like the disciple John, Lord, and John the Baptist. May we point others to the saving grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing our little lights to shine, not to draw men toward us, but to point them to you. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. All right. Praise God. I, I do have a few um, opening uh, remarks, and I wasn't sure on the order. I'm just letting God lead and guide us on that order. So come on in, ladies. We're so grateful to have you all. It is just a blessing to see uh, all of the women out here. When I look upon you, you are beautiful. Mm, wow. Just thank God for y'all. So to the class members, I want to say welcome. Welcome. We're so happy to have you. And I'm going to do some other welcomes in a moment. But let me just take a moment to tell you just a little bit about this awesome year that we have as we study uh, John's gospel, okay? The gospel, the truth, right? Well, we know that you're going to experience this year in your classes a multi-generational group. And many of you all may be surprised, um, as I mentioned to the group leaders on, uh, I think it was our refill on last week, that we actually have a class that goes, I think it's from 18 or maybe it's 19 now, so maybe the person had a birthday, uh, but 19 to all, way, all the way to 80. What a blessing. And so you are going to experience a multi-generational event. And to God be the, the glory for that. Um, this is a tradition as we love the Lord and we're disciples of Christ. It should be a tradition that we are what? Teaching others about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. For many of us, it started at home with our little children. Those were the first disciples that we uh, had an impact in. And so... It is going to be an experience to be in this class with all these different women from different ages. And I think that you will be very um, excited and inspired by their perspective. It may be different from your perspective because as they read the word and as you read the word, God is sure to reveal something very personal 
and very specific because he desires to have a personal relationship with you. So I hope that you embrace those multi-generational classes, that you see that the Holy Spirit went before all of us to divinely place you in the classes that you're in. Uh, as we look a little bit about uh, the study, I have a multitude of little notes here, but I do want to share just a little bit of something with you. And this was from our uh, Leaders Refill Workshop. I asked the leaders a question. I said, and I asked you the same question, are you anticipating the importance and timeliness of the Gospel of John in our world today? If so, then you wouldn't be any different from the disciple John. John, after many generations, is the writer of the book of John. It stands with importance and good news of the truth of the gospel of Christ. Many of, of us today, we see that our groups are multi-generational from all different generations, and that is what John wanted them to understand. All, di all different generations would understand the importance of the gospel of Christ. John's goal was to allow people to experience Jesus. He wanted them to know him, and he gives us rich and deep accounts of Jesus' time on earth. But it is not to point to himself. It is only to highlight the works of Jesus and point us to the word of Jesus. John's gospel is different than Matthew, Mark, Luke, John wrote it much later, as I said, many generations after Jesus. He was careful to not just tell us what Jesus said, but to help us understand the deeper meaning behind it all. John's gospel revealed the depth of understanding that he gained from walking with Jesus and as he reflected on Jesus' ministry to make some things more accessible and tangible for us. He was very detailed and he brings the truth and validates who Jesus was and who he would be for us. If we chose him as our Lord and Savior, this story of Jesus was a clear purpose in life. Ultimately, John wrote his gospel to reveal Jesus, call people to him. John does not leave us guessing why he wrote it and he tells us in John 20, 31, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, that by believing you may have life in his name. I hope today and continued for generations to come that we would fall in love with Jesus, that we would be transformed in our hearts, and that we would not just experience this as a walk through history, but that we would experience it as a transformation, mind, body, soul, and spirit. May your eyes, your spiritual eyes, may your spiritual ears be open and you may you explode with joy forevermore again my prayer is that we all would continue to fall in love with Jesus hallelujah glory be to God now I did kind of make a little hint that I had some more welcomes to come. I welcome the class members and I want to make sure that I welcome anybody who's just a guest today who is on the edge. They don't know if they want to sign up for the study. I say, hey, take a leap. Take a leap. Do it in the name of Jesus. I do also want to uh, introduce uh, our ALs. We have our administrative leaders. If they would wave, they're going to be a second time to be recognized, but I would just like for them to wave to you. Along with our administrative leaders, they have some lovely ladies called the host that helped support us on class day, and we're grateful. Would our host give a little wave as well? Hey Amen. I see Miss Lois. She's, she's back with us. Praise the Lord. Yes, this is a shout out to you, girl. Hallelujah, sister. Ha. 
Amen. So we ha also have uh, our children's leaders, and they aren't here with us. They are working. They're taking care of our wonderful children. As many of you know, we do have a pre preschool program, and so in a moment we'll have our wonderful children's supervisor, Quillacy Battle, whose birthday is today. Happy birthday. Amen. And she'll tell us a little bit about our program. Uh, we also have our group leaders. These are your shepherds. We could not do this without our wonderful group leaders. I want to tell them publicly that I love them and I love them more. And I'm so grateful for them. Would you all stand, our group leaders? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right. So along with that, I want to give a little shout out. Brad is not here today, but Brad is a part of the church. He is, the, I think, the media director would be his correct title. And if I didn't say that right, my apologies. But along with that, he has a wonderful assistant. Her name is Elizabeth. Hello, Miss Elizabeth. Hello. <laughs> All right, and we do have Kathleen. Uh, she is up there. She's one of our administrative leaders, and she is our techie lady sister. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, and so now I'm going to ask our class uh, staff to join me here on the stage. Hallelujah. And they are going to uh, introduce themselves, and, uh, and I feel like I'm going to give them a double introduction because we do have uh, Angie Arvilla, who is our substitute teaching leader. Hallelujah. <laughs> we have Quillacy Battle, who is our children's supervisor. And Miss Donna Bird, she is last in the announcement, but not least. Hallelujah. Amen. And Donna is our class administrator. Many of you have gotten to know her from her special calls and her lovely voice. Amen. And so I'm going to let them uh, just take just a few uh, seconds to uh, talk to you. Hi, I'm Angie Arvilla. I, like she said, the substitute teaching leader uh, for Garland. Um, this is going to be my second year. Um, as a substitute teaching leader, and so I'm very excited because this is very nostalgic, like I was telling some of you. I started in the study of John, so it's fun to see how you come full circle um, and how the Lord has grown you from my first study of John to this study of John. So speaking of full circle, um, I'd like to introduce our our full four, fourfold approach, if I could say it, fourfold approach, fourfold approach. Um, it is a fourfold approach. Uh, that BSF has, and it is a blessing because um, it allows us to get connected, um, not just to each other as a community, but also get connected to God's word and get connected to the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit does through these lessons. So our fourfold approach is actually, um, you do your lesson, as you'll see for some of you who've done this many years, you have your lesson, your books, we, can, we now have them online, so lots of great resources. Um, you have your lesson, and today was just an introductory lesson, so it was a meet and greet, welcome. You know, you get to meet all your friends in your class. Um, you do your lesson, you talk about your lesson with your community, with your sisters um, in your group that she said that had been divinely appointed. Um, you get to know one another, you get to pray for one another. Um, that is an important step in community. We can do our lesson at home, but we come here for a reason. And so I think God honors and blesses that. Um, the next thing we come to lecture, lecture. Um, it is not easy. God bless Sherelle. She does this every week. She's got to come up with a lecture every week to God be the glory for that. And he, he equips and strengths who he calls. But um, that lecture ties in those questions. Maybe your class had a question that agree to disagree. Maybe it gets addressed in the lecture. But if not, we also have the notes. The notes are so wonderful. Um, I think we learned last year that a lot of these notes were from seminary, seminary, uh, not even pastors, but people who've gone through seminary, and uh, BSF has poured into um, what they put into these notes. So again, this fourfold approach is a resource, but it is something that can bless us if we do it in 
the right way, all three, all four ways. So, yeah, I'll hand it over to Donna. Hi, I'm Donna, and I am the class administrator. So um, just wanted to tell you a couple of things that are really important for our class. One of the things, look at your tag. Um, you need to be wearing your tag from what I say bumper to bumper. You see that on the screen from, from the time you get out of your car till the time you get back into your car. And there's a couple of reasons for that. It is security for this church and for our class and for our children. On the back of it, in the past, Headquarters has given us uh, information to put emergency information on the back of there. That's no longer something that headquarters asks us to do. That goes along with HIPAA uh, laws and that sort of thing. However, for me, I did put, if I fall down, I want my husband called. So I put my husband's number on the back of my tag. And if you want emergency information on the back of your tag, feel free to put a sticker on there. The other thing that we need to know, and we have our ladies in place here, Dean is going to be over here, and she's going to be standing here for a second. Marsha, Lisa, and Lee. And I just want to tell you real quick, if we have a fire and our fire alarm goes off in here, you will hear it. You'll hear the beep, beep, beep. And if we're in this room, exactly what's going to happen is we divide into quadrants. So down the middle and down the middle. So just like just picture a square, four squares. This is our hold up your number, Lee. This is our quadrant number one. And it's going to go from the piano side back to the middle and down the middle here in the front half. Y'all are going to go exit out this door. See Lee pointing to the door? Everybody in this quadrant, point to your exit door, please. You're going to exit out that door and go out by the, by the playground, out across the street. Everybody that's in this middle to back section back here, Yes, Lisa's showing you where. This is quadrant number two. You're going to go out that door and across the street. That's your exit. You want to be sure and get away from the building across the street. Everybody that's in Dean's section over here, quadrant three is going to be this far left side, the organ side to the middle and the front, you know, from those two double uh, pews in the middle there, that's forward this way, is going to exit out this door if you go out that door, there's another exit right outside that door that goes across Glenbrook, and you go across the street. The back quadrant is number four, where Marsha's holding up her hand back there. It's from the middle back section, and that back quadrant back there, you're going to exit out that door with Marsha where she's pointing to. Everybody point to your exit back there that's in that section, that quadrant. There you go. You're going to exit out that door, and there's another one to the side. You can go out. And you're going to go across the street, both directions, out across Glenbrook and out across the street there, um, Avenue B. Thank you. So that's all I got. Thank you very much. And here's Quillacy, our amazing children's supervisor. Well, I don't know about all that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> and that's too many instructions for me. I'm going to just run. Y'all don't do that. I'm just leaving. <laughs> so anyway. But one, two, this is true. God loves me and God loves you. So... When you bring your children, grandchildren, other people's children, anybody that can sign the form, <laughs> uh, they don't have to be left hand or right hand, but just sign the form. And uh, what, what's taking place back there is not a babysitting. We don't do babysitting, you know, we just don't do that. We go to work. And so <laughs> what's taking place back there, what, uh, unbeknownst to your eyes, is that they're getting the same message that you're getting. There's an, uh, we have a, a part of it that's pulled out of your lesson. And that's what you can talk about on your way home. And so today, this is not my regular attire, but it could be. But today, John was just minding his own business like all y'all probably were. And Jesus rolled up on him talking about, hey, come follow me. And so, just the fisherman. So, but it changed his whole life. It changed John's life and God's intention for you is that when he says, come, follow me, it's going to change your whole life. It's going to wreck it somewhere, but it's going to wreck it, and he's going to resurrect it in a right way. So um, when we uh, began to use the classes to volunteer, please don't come in there thinking you're going to babysit, because it's not going to even happen. We're going to go to work, and y'all going to go to work with us. Y'all get to go to work with us and see what it is that... God does. <laughs> so, so anyway, we're going to have a fire drill. I don't know the time yet, but we're going to have a fire drill next week for the, for the children. It's just a drill. This is only a drill.
We pray. One, t one year it wasn't. Somebody burned some popcorn and the thing went off. So. <laughs> but this is only a drill. So in an event that uh, we have a, an emergency, uh, please know that God has already went before you and made provision for your children. And we're gonna, we have a plan and we're going to we're going to walk that plan out uh, next week, and uh, your kids are going to be safe across the street at the apartment. So I don't know where I'm at, but there's an apartment complex across the street, so they'll be safe over there. We'll try to bring bottles, and <laughs> I remember one year we had a, <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> we forgot a bottle, baby, we crying. Somebody had a bath. So can't you breastfeed her? <laughs> so I shouldn't have said that, but I did. Anyway, so... <laughs> Anyway, all right. Okay, yeah. Thank you, ladies. Wow, you got it. just a taste of what God is doing. I thank you for my wonderful class staff and all of our leaders and all of you class members and everyone who supports us here at BSF. Thank you all, ladies. Um, we do have a lecture, and that lecture today will be provided from headquarters. Um, headquarters provided this lecture, and it will be delivered by our executive director, Holly Roberts. That's why you see that we're going to play that on the video. What I'd like for you to know is that the video... It's, um, it's not an extremely lengthy video, but we do realize at the time, and so I hope that you all stay for the end of the video. But I'm going to pray us in, and I am going to pray us out in a moment. But I do want to let you know that our executive director, she actually joined the BSF staff in 2018. She served as a children's leader. Again, her name is Holly Roberts, a group leader and a teaching leader. Okay, and Holly and her husband have served and participated in BSF together for most of their lives, and they are continuing in the generational, impacting their generation, being their, their uh, children and grandchildren, but as well as many more. And so uh, I'm going to pray us into her lecture. Enjoy and be free to leave uh, as soon as that is over. I thank you all for your patience, and I am so grateful for each and every one of you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for uh, this sweet time that you have brought us together. Lord, I just pray that you would continue to open our hearts and draw us closer and closer to you. Lord, I am so grateful for and thankful for what you are doing today, what you did on yesterday, and what you will do forevermore. May we be so careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that I pray. Amen.